I mean, that was one of the main things that attracted me to all the left right brain research is that uh, Gazzaniga and uh, Rogers Berry, they did the split brain research. And, and it yeah. was a really uh, reasonable but drastic insight because people were having seizures and that seizure activity, because we really do have two brains. I mean, people, there's a big argument, you know, that we have one brain. And of course we do in a way because it's working holistically, but anatomically the left brain even has its own blood supply. So they really are physically, it's one of the most obvious things when you look at a brain, it's like, mm -hmm. well, there's a left side and a right side. And then there's this huge connection of maybe a hundred million nerve fibers called the cor corpus callosum that connects them. So these surgeons thought, well, if you have a seizure, it usually has a focal point. It starts in one side of the brain, but then it spreads across that corpus callosum, and then the whole brain is seizuring. So they thought, let's just cut the corpus callosum. And it's, uh, you know, pretty radical surgery. But the surprising thing is how little happened once they cut it. I mean, patients mm -hmm. didn't experience a change in consciousness. And in fact, it wasn't until... Uh, they tried to get back into ordinary life that they realized that uh, they had this split brain syndrome where it was like, you know, because the left brain controls the right hand and the right side of the body hmm. and the right brain controls the left. So there's this cross wiring, which I've never heard a good explanation of why nature would cross wire something. I mean, it's a, it's a strange setup, architecturally speaking. But uh, so, so you'd find all this conflict where the left hand would like stories of uh, this patient who was, you know, uh, just channel surfing with the left hand and would find something on TV. And then the other hand would come and change the channel or a patient <laughs> who was smoking and, you know, light up and start smoking a cigarette. And then the right hand would come and put it out. And so they thought, well, this is kind of interesting. So they brought him back in the lab and then they found out really there's, this is a great way to study the isolated left brain and right brain. And mm -hmm. people went in now, you know, years and, uh, you know, 30 years, 40 years of research behind it now, it's absolutely clear that we really are living with two really fundamentally different modes of processing the world. And then, and we're, um, and we could shift back and forth between them. And uh, one of the things I get, because people say, oh, you're not into that left, right brain stuff, are you? And, and so the left, right brain stuff also took a hit because um, in some ways it got too popular. And 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 then people thought it was just too much of a simplification. So there came about this this other uh, kind of a movement that said, "Oh, it's all a myth. It's all right. a myth." And um, so there's a lot of people who are under this impression that look, the left right brain thing is just a myth. They they really don't differ. And for those, I'd actually suggest, you know, Ian McGilchrist wrote an amazing book, The Master and His Emissary. Yeah. And if you ever want convincing, I mean, it's I think it's 600 pages of thousands of pieces of data really well done scientifically and if that doesn't convince you that there are fundamental uh modes of uh different modes of processing reality that exist in the left and right sides of the brain i mean nothing will mm -hmm. and so you're seeing a comeback now where people are realizing like yeah okay there really are not just you know simple perceptual but really fundamental different ways uh of uh, like we've got these you know categorical identities and that's a real left brain mode of processing mm. so if i see myself as a male or if i see myself as, as a certain age or if i see myself as an athlete or a non-athlete all these simple categorical distinctions that are, we're drawn to in terms of our identity those are all left brain and then you get into this right brain mode of processing and it's more attracted to not knowing it's more attracted to mystery it's more attracted to this mo this this possibility that i am fundamentally a mystery that i can't nail down and that's a very interesting way to live it's, it's mm -hmm. for me it's a it's a much more um satisfying it's a, with the meaning of, of our lives come from that kind of mode i mean you can't find you can find a little bit you, you can try you can say well i'm an athlete and, and or i'm an accountant and you can find some meaning in that but that's all going to that's going to pass by very quickly and it can be taken away very quickly see any of these little things you attach to the self from the left brain and if you become uh, identified with them uh, and, and you can lose them at any minute and then people you know people are, are really rich and so that's their identity and then their money's gone and then they're mm -hmm. left left with this like well who am i <laughs> and so um uh, that right mode of processing it's it's far more eternal it's mysterious it's non-material um and it's not categorical and so when we think we think in categories so most of our thinking at least in my version is left brain the the most the mode that most people go through from morning to night is this left brain thinking mode, which is dividing the world into these very fundamental categories. 
and that's fine. Um, but what the what my what no self no problem attempts, but what, what the goal of the book was, and and definitely the goal of this uh, workbook that's coming out, because I mean you can only philosophize so much about this, and so we, it's it's far better to go with experience and let the reader directly experience these mm-hmm. through exercises, and um, and when you do that, there's a shift, and you you can really feel a shift where you could start recognizing and valuing these modes of right hemisphere processing and and th- we have them you know I, I enjoy if you're driving to work and you see someone and they're they've got the radio cranked up and they're just singing you know i mean it's a great right mode of processing but they get to work and then the left brain turns back on and they say well how was your drive in they're like oh i zoned out and we just think you know what the right most right brain modes of processing are looked at as zoned out zombie but they're not they're they're, they're really genuine uh, important, necessary modes to completing the picture of what it means to be human. Mm. Yeah, it's so fascinating, and I suppose it's it's present as well, isn't it? That that right brain mode of operating that when you're zoned out on the way to work, it's now actually you're completely in that moment, in flow, whatever, however you might describe it. And yeah, and then the left brain is maybe focused on future and past, and it, it's unable to sort of really access that present. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it because the left brain is always interested in changing and manipulating the world. And and so you need some kind of past memory of, okay, well, here's how it was and here's how I want it to be. Mm-hmm. And so it's always in that mode of, uh, you know, making more money or getting that other uh, higher position at work or or maybe I'm not in a relationship. So it wants to be, you know, it wants well, things will be good when I'm in a relationship or things will be good when I'm not in a relationship. You know, so it goes, it's always living in that uh, future because it, and it's very interesting. And in fact, Ian McGilchrist actually pointed this out in his book. I thought it was a really important uh, thing that our culture can recognize is that most of us, about 80% of us are right-handed. And that of course is controlled by the left brain. And we've really changed and manipulated the world through our dominant right hand. We've created mm-hmm. things all, in fact, even artificial intelligence, all these things are, one could say, are, are have been created and manipulated uh, through the use of our dominant right hand from simple tools. And it's very interesting that um, even if you take a modern person and 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 you you get them to start making tools and you get them to even, even use their left hand, it doesn't matter. The left brain lights up because the left brain loves mm-hmm. that, like, let's make a tool and change things. <laughs> yeah. But the right brain is just far more content with like, it's okay, you know, and, and that's what's so wonderful about music. You know, you don't imagine if you listen to music trying to get to the end, that would be weird. <laughs> you know, you know, music immediately puts you into this right, every note right now is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it was Alan Watts who said, you know, we play music, you know, but yeah. we go to work. And so, you know, those, that, in my view, that really reflects the two sides of the brain. Uh, the the right hemisphere plays; it's in the moment. It's like a kid, you know. Kids, mm-hmm. kids aren't. Wor- hopefully, they're not worried about what what they're going to do when they grow up. They're just they're just playing yeah. and having fun in the moment. And um, and this left brain, yeah, particularly in some cultures, it gets so, mo- you know, you you. I mean, I was surprised to see my kids. And, you know, and I always encourage them, you know, lots of right brain stuff, but they live in a left brain culture. So they would start asking me questions like in t- 10, like, dad, what am I going to do? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do when you grow when you grow up and get older. I mean, just, you know, have some fun now and, and it'll work out. And that's, mm. you know, sort of the, the right hemisphere has a certain, I always look at it as trust in the universe. It, it knows that things are going to be okay. And that left brain is always, you know, it's part of evolution. It had to be paranoid and it had to be, it had to look at the worst possible scenario. And so when I look back on my like ne- really bad neurosis when I was 19, it was all left, my left brain. I'd love to get into a brain scan because my left brain was probably just off the charts, you mm. know. So the right brain, it's almost a present, but also patient. So it's like, it doesn't it's not urgent in the sense of i need answers i need the category of what am i going to do when i grow up it's Mm -hmm. no this will you'll find that like it's that you don't have to sort of be forcing that right now 